Well, was it the most unforgettable day in sports history, at least in America? Uh, today is June 17, mm-hmm. and it is the 30th anniversary of the O.J. Simpson Bronco oh, chase. Is it really? It is. Huh. And I can't say that I knew all of this until I read this article on cbssports.com today. Mm. And so I was reading about the juice and and you know just I was looking for little nuggets that I maybe had forgotten about the Bronco mm-hmm. situation. Yeah, anytime I, I think cuz I I've I've read uh I've I've watched consumed so much of this this trial in the case over the the decades. But every time I see something new on it, you read an article, I learn something that I didn't know. I always think that you there's nothing new, and yet there's always well, something. Well, yeah, because we were pretty young. Yeah. I mean, I remember I was playing basketball. You know, it was warm mm-hmm. in Kansas in June. I remember, ah, uh, so it was 94, so I was one year removed from uh, high school graduation. I think I was home for the summer mm-hmm. after college, and we were playing basketball at a friend's house. Watching the Knicks play the, uh, I think was it the Rockets, Rockets in the NBA Finals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and we were going back and forth, in and out, playing ball and watching the game, and then the news broke in that the juice was on the loose. Yeah, uh, people are. I'll age, never forget it. People our age. I was at a pool hall because it was like the one place in town where you could pretend to be a ruffian. <laughs> you're like in like the ninth grade. You're like, yeah, man, I'm gonna go play some pool. And same thing. They had the basketball game on, and then they switched over to the Bronco chase. And I hate to be it, but it was a very, very bro where a lot of people in that pool hall were cheering for OJ. They thought it was great. <laughs> Seriously. They, they, it, was yeah. a, it was like a joke. They are like, oh, man, OJ, yeah, well, go, Well, it was juice. kind of a joke. And then they had people uh, on, like, the freeway overpasses with oh, yeah. OJ signs. and. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was, we all remember that. It was weird. A bunch of dumbasses my from my high school got the free OJ shirts and we're wearing them around. And so this CBS sports article was talking about all of the great or no, well notable sports moments that happened on that day. Are you aware of all of these? No, I have not seen this. So this goes through it chronologically. Okay. Nine o seven a.m. Arnold Palmer tees off. At his final U.S. Open round ever. I'll be damned. He was 64. He hadn't played in the tournament 11 years. He got an exemption from the USGA to play at Oakmont. Hmm. And his, his, you know, he wasn't any good. Yeah. He, he, that was a Friday as he missed the cut. But that was his, uh, that was his final U.S. Open round ever that morning. Hmm. 10, 17 a.m., the Rangers line up and stroll down, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, uh, Central, uh, 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 New York City, some mm-hmm. street, I don't know. The parade. Yeah. It was the, the Rangers Stanley Cup parade. Yeah, it was the Mark Messier guarantee, and it was the first time the Rangers had won a cup in yeah, how, 54, you know, 54 years. 54 years. So that was a big deal. 11.09 a.m., murder charges filed against O.J. Simpson. Mm. That's when the chaos began. Yep. Remember, that it would all happen in the same day. Absolutely. 3 o'clock, U.S. hosts its first World Cup match ever. Well, I'll be damned. The 1994 World Cup was the first time the event was held in the United States. The opening ceremonies were at Soldier Field, the home of the Bears in Chicago. I don't remember this at all. Oprah introduces Diana Ross, who performs a choreographed musical number on the field, and President Bill Clinton addressed the crowd before kickoff of the opening game. Huh. It was between Germany and Bolivia, and the uh, Germans won. Dude, that's it's kind of crazy here. All this on the same day. Yep, and then at 4.55, that's when the LAPD had their press conference mm-hmm. saying that uh, they were searching for yeah, the he, juice. He was wanted. 8.06 p.m., Ken Griffey Jr. ties Babe Ruth with 30 home runs before June 30th. <laughs> wow. Did you know that? No, I knew none of this. He had a solo home run off of David Cohn and my Royals, tying him with Ruth as the only players in history to hit 30 home runs before June 30th. Mm. Unfortunately for baseball fans, no one got to see how much damage Griffey could have done in a full season because earlier in the day, um, earlier in the day, Major League Baseball Players Association Executive Director Donald Fair met with 55 players to discuss the owner's proposal for a salary cap. Just five days later, Griffey would pass Ruth with his 31st stinger of the season, and then the strike hit. Yeah, the strike. 
And that was the one that undid, right? The Expos were in first place. Wasn't yeah. Gwen flirting with, with 400? This was, so the strike hit in August. Or was it Larry Walker that was flirting with 400? Someone was. And the World Series was canceled. Hmm. Uh, 8.56 p.m. Pursuit of O.J. Simpson begins. Remember that. The Juice and his friend uh, A.C. Cowlings, Al Cowlings, fled from police in the white Bronco. 9 p.m., NBA Finals, Game 5, Knicks Rockets. <laughs> That's crazy. Someone is saying that they did a uh, Vancouver Ford text line. They did a 30 for 30 called June 17th, 1994. Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't remember. I don't it's remember that. It's like all. the second or third one they came out with. Mm. And they're saying it's it's all just live footage of all mm-hmm. the different stuff that was going on. Yep. Now I kind of want to go back and, and watch that. So the Knicks won. They pulled it out, 91-84. Patrick Ewing had 25. And then at 11.47 p.m. that night, the LAPD took Simpson into custody. And, of course, that was yeah. must-see TV that, you know, Every news organization. Yeah, they had was all the aerial that. shots, and, we, the, the, and it was his house. Yep, it was at his house, and we all thought that he was going to kill himself. And it was kind of cool that we got to see OJ's house back at that time. I mean, we didn't see celebrity no. houses. We no. didn't. I don't know where OJ lives. Yeah, and I think now I think they 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 bulldozed that place. I don't think it's it's there anymore. I think it's it's gone. It's been razed to the ground. So but. is that the uh, the oh, most memorable? Mike. I don't I I don't know. <laughs> Most unforgettable day in American sports history they call it. I mean that's a lot of sports man. That's a man. lot happening on one Especially day. Especially on a June day where I know. You, typically you not would that think much. that there's not that much. And some of it it's like, you know, obviously the parade with the Rangers and like that's sports adjacent, but that's that's kind of crazy that all the the coincidences kind of lined up with that with that one thing. The Griffey thing I don't remember at all. I don't either. And I also yeah, the strike year all we remember from that year is the strike. Yeah. But Griffey was on pace to shatter sixty-one and mm-hmm. sixty-one. Now I do remember, like I, I remember that Griffey had that season cut short. I don't remember it being that year. I don't remember it being the O.J. Simpson one. All that stuff just kind of blends together in in a in a like a in, in, I don't know, just a blur. It was so long ago. But the O.J. thing, like in my lifetime, and you know, you talk to your parents about you know Kennedy uh, being assassinated was obviously a big one there for some people. Maybe Elvis dying. Um, oh, you know, yeah, Cuban Missile Crisis, you know, is is one for people in in my life uh, that I remember vividly. I remember the OJ. I remember that. I remember the verdict being read. I was in school, and we stopped school, and like we all watched it. They brought in the roller TV. So the OJ thing has two of my like burned into my head. I will not forget. And then nine eleven was probably the other one that I won't ever forget. I remember seeing the second plane hit live. And isn't it weird that O.J. Simpson has the same occupying space in my head as 9-11? Well, it was, yeah, it was just that. um, I mean, in in no way is it comparable to 9-11, but it was just that wild that it captivated everyone. Mm Mm-hmm. I just the other one for me, and you may have been a little young. Oh, you are going Challenger? Yeah, yeah. The that's space one. shuttle yeah. disaster. I remember again watching that in school, but I was very young, so I, I do remember that because I remember them turning off the TV very quickly and then trying to do the. We didn't just see that, right? No, we good. That, and that, that the Sally ride, you know, the teacher was on there. That was yeah. Uh, they they showed it to us. We did were they? In the, yeah, we were in the library. <laughs> And the teacher had to stop down and be like, okay, kids, uh, let's talk it out. Here's <laughs> see, what happened. See, it blows my mind, though, like, because in like growing up, obviously, much younger, uh, you know everything that's going on in celebrities' life. There's nothing, like, the O.J. Simpson thing to me is so foreign that you wouldn't have seen coming up, like, because now, after the fact, they know that he had multiple domestic violence, you know, issues, at least where police showed up to the house, oh, yeah. and it's... It, it blows my mind. Like my age, we probably maybe the Obama inauguration. Like I oh. remember watching that in fourth <laughs> or fifth grade. You don't have a nine eleven, uh, dude. I was like three well, or four. I know, but what, like I don't but remember in your 9/11. lifetime. You're twenty four years of life. I'm twenty six. Yeah, you don't. You don't Obama. have one like that. That's there's not one thing that. I mean, kickball Fridays was cool. <laughs> the, I gotta ask you not, again, not to get all, all weird, but I uh-uh. mean, another one for me is I was working out in my buddy's garage, 
it was uh, the COVID lockdowns. So the gyms weren't yeah. quite open yet. I was COVID work- was pretty wild. I was working out in my buddy's garage, and January sixth, I we uh, he has a TV in his he has a TV yeah. in there, and I did thought to, I thought to myself at the at the time I'm like, oh, and and you know obviously it it, it calmed down. I really thought to myself, I was like, oh, my God, like this could be the biggest day in you know, one of the biggest day in United States history. Like, I remember that. And, and that's another one. Does that. And, and you're. I, yeah. Uh, so this is again, this is going to show my youth and probably, again, my ignorance. But my remembrance of that, the one that sticks out to me is I remember being at my dinky little college radio station and they were doing the softball conference tournament much like they do for D1, and we all knew that they had canceled it for the next day, and it was done, and we were all going to go home, but no one really knew how long we were going to go home for. And then the January 6th thing, ignorance, me and my buddies, it popped up on Twitter. Oh, man, that's crazy. Who wants to go make a beer run? Hmm. Let's go play some Xbox. Because yeah. that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Like the Obama thing in grade school sticks out to me. I do remember being in Mr. Kramer's class and that being put up. And then my remembrance of COVID is the canceling yeah. the conference yeah. tournament. It's yeah, the January sixth one. I, I that one doesn't do. I just was like, oh, I was that was an eye roll for mm. me. Like just a bunch of rubes, and I think we had so much fatigued by that time yeah. with all that stuff that it was just like you know th- i'm just disgusted i'm not watching this it wasn't a where were you moment covid shutdown was yeah. that was wild because i was sitting there at a blackjack table in vegas yeah you were gone when the nba it was, yeah the, the, they it was me and i um god i, 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 I thought to, it was just lynch i remember listening to it I, i'm trying to remember if it was just me and mike or if we had someone else i think it was just me and mike so i think i was hosting and mike was producing and i was bouncing stuff off of him but yeah they pulled there was the timberwolves and someone and they pulled them off the court and we sat there and we're like holy crap like they just shut down the nba and i was like here we go and so I was sitting at a table, a yeah, blackjack table in Vegas, and that's where the Pac-12 tournament was mm-hmm. at the time. And they canceled. Oregon State had played a game, but then they canceled the next day, right? Yeah. And that's when it's like, oh, yeah, this is real. And then as we were down there playing cards, I just remember vividly remember seeing people flooding out of the casino, like with their with their bags, yeah. rolling out yeah. to go catch an Uber to go to the airport and get out of there. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're just like yeah, ordering for fear, drinks. For fear of getting stuck. I mean, at the time, there were people that were like stuck in, in cruise ships, and there was the idea if you didn't get home, and that is nuts. Yeah. And, and meanwhile, we're just sitting there ordering drinks, playing cards. Like, this is great. <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, I just remember thinking, if they're canceling an NBA season, like, sports doesn't cancel. Like, yeah, they, you can plow through anything. I was like, they're canceling seasons. I was like, sports yeah. is sports. Like, stuff's about to get real. And, of course. Uh, that was pretty it, surreal. Yeah. That was, that was and crazy. then seeing the the next couple of days, we stayed in Vegas and came yeah. home at normal time. But yeah. seeing just the emptiness of the strip and yeah. and the emptiness of the sports, like the sports books are just shut down. Crazy. It was such an eerie, yeah, weird thing. Yeah. So it's like we all, you know, no matter how old you are, you have a couple of those. But it's interesting to hear from someone who's who's young, like Will. I think with the the, the media circus we have, I wonder if the, if if you just won't have, let's say, if they're burned in, maybe a little bit less than than people that are our age a little bit older because the, well, the information was uh he makes it, a wasn't, good, it wasn't like it is readily available he makes a good point about the juice in that for young people he's right in that you kind of know everything about them yeah and so it would be weird it, so in other words if i said hey what if this happened tonight mm-hmm. some athlete some high profile i mean top of their game athlete Lops off two heads and go and gets in a white Bronco and there's a chase at 55 miles an hour down an LA freeway. Yeah, who would that be? Like f- to us, it was stunning. Yeah, because the juice had was, this private life of domestic violence and like there were you know obviously people in the know knew. But in today, but we the would masses. Know. We didn't know he was a bad guy. We just thought he was a great running back, and he was very congenial. Everybody liked the juice. But we would know today. Today, you would would know. know. Like, you could pick that person. And I hate to say this, but let's say, so OJ, I'm trying to find the equivalent of of OJ. I think I have it. Ex-player, great guy, um, uh, like a Hall of Fame guy. It would have to be like a LeBron. 
but like in two years. <laughs> LeBron was bigger than than OJ. Uh, but like, you know, I'm I'm saying someone like like let's say Troy Aikman, right? Troy Aikman's a Hall of Famer. Uh, not the best ever, but a Hall of Famer, and he's a, a beloved broadcaster. And by all accounts, he's a pretty nice guy. Like you don't think anything of it. I hate to say this, but if he killed his ex-wife or was alleged to, and and is and, and and her new boyfriend or whatever, and then like went on the lam, we have become so desensitized. It would be a big deal. It would not stop the world. It would. It just wouldn't. It would be like, oh crap! Did you hear about Troy Aikman? And then, like, there'd be something new on TikTok. We we have such weird attention spans, especially youth. There just isn't news that can keep people's attention. There just, there just isn't. And I'm sorry, but Aikman killing or being alleged to kill two people and then running, it would not dominate. OJ dominated the news for, like, four years. What if it were Rory McIlroy? He just snapped. Yeah. I, again, it would be a huge story for, like, Aaron Rodgers. a week and a half. Maybe LeBron, like the the Tiger stuff is crazy, and the you know it's like, you know people move on from it. It's just you can't, you just can't, you can't get people's attention like you used to. You just can't, and so I I just think that those moments for people are going to become less and less, um, because we just have the ability to be like, oh man, that's really terrible. Cool. What else have I got going on? Look, I'm gonna get my phone here, and I got yeah. nine other things that I can look. No at. No attention span. No. Kobe dying is is another one that some people are bringing up. That was big. Yeah, I, I remember, remember where I was yeah, when was I a, found that out. Yep. Rolled out of bed. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess. Yeah, this... that's a good one. Like, were you stunned when you heard the news about Aaron Hernandez? A little bit, but again, Aaron Hernandez was an All Pro tight end, or at least a, a Pro Bowl tight end, who murdered multiple people, and it was a joke and a punchline within. A week, and then after that, we're like, eh. yeah. But I think what we're getting at here is there is a difference between stunning and unpredictable news, and something so big and so impactful in the world that most people remember exactly where they were when they found out. Yeah, like that's a whole nother level. Yeah, and nine eleven certainly is our yes. generation's. Yeah, that's there's no doubt about that one. <laughs> nope. But there are others. And the juice, that that yeah. was one yeah. for whatever reason. Well, I mean, we all know the reasons. It yeah. was just, dude, that was unbelievable. If you're one of those nincompoops that were holding signs that said, we love you, juice, and like free OJ and all that, do you think you're embarrassed when you look back and see well, those no, photos it was, of yourself? Well, no, because a lot of it was just, it was the racial divide. I know, but divide and... I would hope to think that you would look back on that and be like, eh. Sorry. Yeah. I wore a free Mike Tyson shirt I think once. There's a lot of people that are And I'm just, embarrassed by that. I just think a lot of people are happy that the juice got off because it was like Yeah, man. See, he that's... represented the the one guy that for all the wrongs, it was like, hey, at least uh at least you know, one guy got away with it. Yeah. Because of the judicial system and rigged against black I, people. I would and... like to think that uh all these years later that someone could look back on that and be like, My bad. My bad. 